Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on stone game 2. And on this one there's a stone game and you have piles arranged in a row and each pile has a positive um, integer number of stones. And the objective of the game is to end with the most stones. So you take turns, Alice goes first and M equals 1. And on each player's turn that, turn, that player can take all the stones in the first X piles where X is anywhere from 1 to 2M. Then we set M to that. So the game continues until the stones have been taken. Assuming Alice and Ball play optimally, you return the maximum number of stones Alice can get. Okay, so let's, let's we'll take a look at this one. So here, M is 1. So Alice goes first. So Alice just takes this one. And then, so we can, because M is 1 to start off, Alice can take anywhere from 1 to 2. So Alice takes 1. Then M is still 1 for Bob. So Alice takes this one. Then Bob takes these two. And now, since X is 2, M is now 2 for Alice. So Alice can take anywhere from 2 to 4, and then Alice takes these 2, and then that's how Alice has 10. Okay. So in this example, I guess let's try to figure it out. Basically, it looks like Alice wants to take this one. And then, I guess if Alice takes 104, I guess it would be something like Alice takes... So Alice has to take the first one. And then just by like guessing, Alice would have to take this one. So let's try to do that kind of thing. So if Alice takes the first one, then Bob can either take these two or just the second one. So if Bob takes both of these, then Alice can take all three of these. And Bob's goal is basically to minimize Alice's score. So Bob doesn't want to do that. So Bob just takes this one. Then Alice can either take one or two. Right, because M is still 1. So if Alice takes 2, then Bob can take this 100. So Alice just takes this one. So Alice scores 4. And then Bob can take 1 or 2. So Bob takes 2. And then Alice takes this. That's how you get that. So hopefully that makes sense. So basically, we can have one function. And we can just keep track of whose turn it is. And if it's Alice's turn, Alice will maximize her score. If it's Bob's turn... Bob is trying to maximize his score, but also he's just minimizing Alice's score, right? So we can have one function and we just keep track of whose turn it is. And so we have a decision of like how many piles we take every time. And so because you have these decisions, you're gonna to wanna to go towards DP, right? You can take like one, two or whatever. You're gonna to wanna to go towards DP. And then you're gonna to wanna to start thinking of like states and so on. So let's think of some states that we probably need to have. And also notice that this piles length is 100. So we can have Another thing is we can have n cubed at log n, something like that would still pass. So anything that is better. So we can have a lot of things in our DP function. So let's think of the states. So one thing we're probably gonna wanna have is we're probably gonna wanna have the index of where we're at. Another thing that we're probably gonna wanna have is like the m value we can take, right? And then do we need anything else? Well, if you have the index and the M value, then we can just loop. Um, we can basically loop for, uh, we can loop for, for that M value, right? So like if we're at some index and we can take some number of stones, we can do a loop in our DP function that goes from like one to M, right? Like this thing here. And so this will be a hundred, this will be a hundred, might be bigger, but it doesn't matter because we only have 100 here, so it's fine. And then our loop will only be 100 at most as well because we, if we go out of bounds, we just stop. So this seems to work. So we're going to keep track of the index, then value. And then, like, what what is this going to look like? Like, let's, let's, let's think of, like, I guess the next thing we want to think of is, like, the base case. So the base case is pretty easy. We're just out of bounds. So if we're out of bounds, like, if we have all our stones, we just want to return 0. And now the tricky part is the recursive. And we actually forgot one thing here. So we need to know whose turn it is, Alice or Bob. And so that's also pretty easy to do. We can just have like a Boolean value or an int. So we can have like an int, Alice or Bob. You know, like one is Alice, zero is Bob or something. And that's fine because that, that can only have two values. So it'll be like 100 times 100 times two, which is fine. Um, yeah, 100 times 100 times 2 times 100, which is fine. That'll pass. And so that's kind of the idea, is depending on whose turn it is, we're going to want to do different things. 
So let's say we're on some index. Let's let's kind of walk through what we want to do. Um, so if it's Alice's turn, then we want to, we still want to do this loop, right? Where we loop anywhere from, um, we loop from one to M of like how many piles we take and add those piles plus the DP of the next index where we start at and then the updated. So let's actually move this over here. Okay, so, so the next index that we're at, the updated M value, right? Like for example, if we take, let's say M is one and we take two, then M will be two. So we update the M value in the DP function. Uh, and it's Bob's turn now. So that's what we want to do. So we want to maximize this. We want to maximize this result here. So maximize. Let's move this over here. Okay, so we want to maximize this guy. Now, if it's Bob's turn, we want to do basically the same thing. So we can just copy this and we can use the same function. We still want to do this loop, but now we want our function to give Alice's score. So for Bob, when we take some piles, we're not going to add those piles because it's going to be Alice's score. So we're not going to add those piles. We're just going to say, we're going to take those piles and then we're going to recurse to Alice's turn. So DP, same thing, next index updated M value, Alice's turn. And we want to minimize this. So basically what that would look like is like, let's say Alice takes this pile here. Then for Bob, so we're gonna add this to Alice's score and then we're gonna recurse to this section here. This will be like the next section we recurse to and M will still be one. Then for Bob, we can take one or two and we'll say like, let's say we take two, we're not gonna add the score anywhere, but we're gonna recurse to this section now and then it's gonna be Alice's turn again. So hopefully that makes sense. When you do these like maximize, minimize, or they can also ask you like, I think they can ask you like, if two players play optimally, who wins the game? What you can do for those kinds of questions is you can just say like, okay, I'm just gonna make a function that will compute Alice's score on Bob's turn, he's gonna to try to minimize that value. On Alice's, she's gonna to try to maximize. And then I can, I can calculate Alice's like score if both players play optimally. And then the total score is just whatever. And then you can figure out Bob's score from Alice's score. In this case, we're not asked who wins the game, but just what's Alice's best score. So that's what we're gonna do. So hopefully that makes sense. So we're gonna have, this is what we're gonna have. We're gonna have the index, the M value, whose turn it is. We're gonna have our bad, add bounce case, the recursive case, and then a cache. Then for Alice, we're gonna to try to maximize Alice's score. For Bob, we're gonna to try to minimize Alice's score. And for Alice, we're gonna add the piles Alice takes because it's her turn. For Bob, we're not gonna add the piles Bob takes, like that doesn't matter. We're only calculating Alice's score. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. So we have a DP function and you can use a hash map or whatever you want in Java, I was saying, or raise faster. And this is gonna be index am and, uh, and n. So the index is from zero to n, the m value can go from um, zero to n plus one or zero to n. And then actually the, the index will be zero to n minus one, right? In the piles, the m value can go anywhere from um, one to one to uh, n. It can technically go bigger, but we don't need to store the bigger m value because if the m value is like 200, but the length is 100, like we don't really care, right? So we don't need to ever grow up past that. And then the last value is just whose turn it is. And then we just initialize it all to negative one. And then we call our helper function, which is like our DP function. So we have a DP ray and then our helper is DP. So we're gonna call it with piles. We're gonna say we start at index zero and value of one and one means Alice's turn. Okay, then we have our DP function. So if we're done, we just return zero. Like if we took all the piles, we return zero. If for this exact thing, we don't have a negative one value, that means we have it cached, so we just return it. Then here's the result. So if it's Alice's turn, we're gonna make our result zero and we're gonna try to maximize it. If it's Bob's turn, so we can write that as well, Bob's turn, 
we're gonna make our result infinity and we're gonna to try to minimize it because we're trying to minimize Alice's result. And so for these DP functions, if you're trying to maximize and make it zero or negative infinity or something, if you're trying to minimize, start out with infinity. Okay, then we have our stones. And the way we can calculate our stones as we go progressively is we're gonna be looping from one to M. So let's say we're gonna be looping through this whole thing. So we can just keep adding to the stone. So we can say like, if we take this value, how many stones is that? And if we take this value, that's the previous value plus this value. So we're just gonna keep keep a cumulative total of the stones. That way, whenever we recurse, we have this cumulative total in a variable, so we don't have to like keep getting it. So we just make a stones, and then we're gonna loop from zero to um, two to two times m, because you're gonna wanna start at taking the value you have. So basically, if like, if m is one, you're gonna wanna loop from zero to two minus one, because you're gonna to wanna to take either this value or this value, so that's why it's zero instead of like one to m. Okay, and then, if our, so basically if we're out of bounds, we're done. If not, let's keep adding to the stones we have. If it's Alice's turn, then pretty easy. We're just gonna say, okay, for this recursion, we're gonna take the number of stones we currently have, right? So let's say we're recursing from here to here that means we took this many stones, so we're gonna take that, and then we're gonna recurse here. And so we're just trying to maximize that value of the stones we have, and then the dp function of this piles array still, the index of the next place we're going, and then the m value will be either m or x plus one. Like I said, the reason you have x plus one is because here we're looping not from one to x, we're looping from one to x minus one. So hopefully that makes sense why. Um, and then, Otherwise, uh, oh, oh yeah, so the zero just means it's Bob's turn after, right? So zero is Bob, Alice is one. Then if it's Bob's turn, we're doing something very similar except we're minimizing. We're not keeping track of the stones we have because the stones for Bob don't go to Alice. And then we're doing a very similar function where we call the same thing, the same thing, and now it's Alice. So hopefully you can see now how you do this kind of thing where instead of calculating both, we just maintain whose turn it is. And then that way you can kind of have two different functions in one where for Bob you're minimizing for Alice you're maximizing and you can do both of those in one function and then finally we get that value and we return it or we get that value then we cache it then we return it and then all we do here is just return so we pass in piles we pass in zero index m value starts at one and Alice goes first and that's pretty good you can make it better, I think, if you do bottom up, but this problem is complicated enough and I don't want to do like 3D bottom up or whatever. I'm sure the ones that ran faster are bottom up. Let's take a look. Uh, actually, I think this is memoization too. But you can also do some like, yeah, so you can also do some like optimizations, I think, and make it a little bit faster and so on. But not super concerned about that. So this one, and this is what I was saying, I was recommending, um, but actually, I don't think I was recommended, but I would say if you're doing these problems, try to always write the time and the space complexity at the very end. Try to reason through it because if you do it a lot, you'll get better at it. So here, M, I guess we can see it in our DP array, right? So this is N, N, and two, so that's N squared. And then we're also looping, um, so M is two times N. So it's like N times N times two N, which means, um, we're gonna be, it'll be n times n times 2n, which is like, which is n cubed. So, n cubed, space. And so space is just gonna be the dp array, which is n times n times two, so that's just n squared. And yeah, hopefully now you can see how like, I go from nothing to this whole thing. You just recognize it's DP, and then you try to figure out like from my constraints, what are the dimensions possible? And if these dimensions are too big, then I can think of like, okay, well, if these dimensions are too big, how do I get rid of something? And obviously you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna keep something like an index, but maybe you can simplify whose turn it is, or you know, the M value or some other thing like that. That's what I would try to do. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be all for this one. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.